Okay. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the MPLS Open Design Team weekly meeting. So today's agenda is light, uh, but the contents may not be light. Um, we have uh, the review of the action items uh, or action points, uh, uh, regular. We can up, we can go over them and update, and then we uh, can dive into the requirements spec uh, document and any updates to it. And uh, last bullet is any other business. So um, if anyone has anything to add on this agenda, please uh, uh, feel free to speak up. Tarek, it's Matthew. Um, unfortunately, I have to leave on the hour. Um, so it'd be great to if we can get as much of the requirements spec discussion done before then. Okay, yes. thank you for that update. Uh, um, uh, for the first bullet, uh, I was I was skimming through the action items. I don't think it will take much uh, to go over the points. It will be very quick, and then you will have uh, the control uh, for the requirements spec update. Thank you. No problem. Okay, without any uh, further delays, let me jump to the updates of our uh, action items. The first action item is covered on the agenda, so I will not go through it. Um, <clears throat> the, there, there's still an, sorry, someone. Okay, there, there, there was an echo on my side. Um, the second uh, action item, uh, it's a point that we discussed multiple time in multiple meetings, and uh, it's still open. Uh, the idea is, uh, you know, a policy to identify a policy for data that goes inside the MPLS label st stack and data that goes outside the MPLS label stack, or after the MPLS label stack. Um, we have a couple of uh, follow-ups uh, that are expected. Um, Unfortunately, I don't see Kiriti so that he can update on that. Um, but uh, we do expect some updates uh, or follow ups on this. Uh, yeah, so feel free if anybody wants to chime in and uh, comment on this further than what's uh, you know expected on the on the uh, bullets there. Uh, the next action item uh, we started is, uh, you know, an, an investigation uh, on the feasibility and uh, utility of our proposal uh, from the different uh, vendors or hardware specialists. Um, we did uh, start this and then why you last week gave a good presentation. Uh, we have a wiki that uh, was created and I just added a link to why uh, presentation there. So. Um, in case someone, uh, I know that why you had added that uh, or uploaded uh, his slides into the last week's meeting, but uh, for us to contain it, uh, you know, I added a reference to it in this wiki. Um, uh, other than that, I don't have any follow ups, but I do ha have an ask that we populate further this wiki with any um, findings uh, from the different uh, attendees. And this is an important point uh, that we, uh, you know, we would like to uh, get the feedback from different um, vendors or hardware specialists. Uh, the next action item uh, was the uh, uh, directives text that we had put together, and uh, we still haven't uh, cl closed on that, unfortunately. And um, maybe if we time permitting this time, this today, we will add it to the agenda, uh, depending on other items that pop up. Uh, the last action item is an open action item uh, that, uh, you know, there are some, some user defined uh, actions that uh, could be possible and we wanted to investigate this further. Uh, we don't have, uh, um, we don't have this on the agenda this week, um, but it's possible we add it uh, on next week's uh, meeting. 
Uh, this is it for the action items that I have um, um, tracked. Um, if nothing else, I can pass the ball to uh, to Matthew or Stewart to talk to us about the requirements spec. Eric, just one sec. Yes. Uh, next week, we probably do return to the, the discussion we had after how you presentation last week. So, if possible, people that has opportunities to talk to what that quote unquote their uh, hardware people should do that the coming weeks so they can report back to the meeting. Yeah, I second that. I agree with you. Do you want me to update the action item on that so that you know we give the people an explicit action item to update us next week? Uh, yeah, if you can, that's fine. Okay, so let's just add an update here. Now. Okay. That's fine. Okay, thank you. All right, I uh, I'll pass the ball to you, uh, either Matthew or Stewart. Go ahead. Thanks, Tarek. How do you want to do this? Because um, I I saw that you'd uploaded the draft to to um to GitHub. Um, but the original is in is in Markdown, and I, I can, which obviously is quite readable. I'm actually wondering. I mean, should we walk through walk through the, you know, it's, there were a lot of changes in the draft as a result of lots of comments. So it might be better to kind of just walk through the new version of the draft, and we'll try and point out. Um, like uh, where where we made significant changes and where there are open kind of open points for discussion and so if folks have got anything that they'd like to say now about that um probably be more convenient for us if we could do it on the on the markdown rather than on the text version but um that's that's up to you uh, this is that. okay uh, only thing i you know uh, you know if if uh if i may is that uh, if you want to do that on GitHub, you can, and if you're expecting to get comments today while you're walking through the documents, uh, it's easier to log these comments uh, in GitHub, you know, and you don't lose them. But it's, if it is too, you know, you're, you're already, the document is uh, in GitHub or I know the text is, but I'm not sure the markdown. Uh, yeah, the markdown is, um, so the only way to do it would be to kind of go through, mark up the text in GitHub and then We'd end up porting it over to the markdown. Um, yeah, that is it. Is it up? Is it the latest uh, matching what you have, or no? Yeah, the version on. Yeah, we haven't done anything since we submitted anything to the uh, since we uploaded the draft. So is map text on GitHub. Okay. Yeah, I'll leave it up to you, but yeah. Um, okay, I'll just share the markdown that we've got then. Maybe I can remember how to do it. Yes. Do you need to sh to add me as a presenter? Uh, I don't know if you get the permission or not. I can make you presenter. I think. Uh, okay, it's, it's let me do it actually. Um, I'm not seeing anything you're sharing. That's because oh, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> can you see something? Can you see? Uh... Uh, yes, but it's a bit small for me, at least. 
Let me, uh, let me see what I can do. The, the yeah, the for some reason I, I find on a Webex shares things in a funny way on on a Mac these days. Um, I don't know why. Is that better? It's much better now for me. I uh, don't know if anyone else complains about the size. Is it readable by everyone or should we it's go fine. and not see? And I fine. probably okay. don't want that's the most problem reading, so that's okay. Okay. All right. Um maybe maybe the yeah. thing to do would be so the first thing I think we did with Stuart where we made some changes was in the terminology. As far as I recall, um, so so we've been trying to um, trying to define what we mean by ancillary data first of all, because that is fairly crucial to this whole project, I think. Um, so so I think we are, we try to clarify that that I, I believe the um, uh, the definition of first of all in the terminology of ancillary data. Um, so data relating to the to the MPLS packet that may be used to affect the forwarding or other processing of that packet, either with the LDR or the LSR. Um, and this data can be implicit, so context specific or encoded within the label stack, in stack data, or and or after the bottom of the label stack, which is post stack data. Um, and then we went on to that goes on to define. What so we mean no, by this. can you stop there on the first paragraph? Uh, yeah. And a question: How detailed do you actually want us to be? I think this is the egress LAR, or actually any LSR. It's it well it, the the forward yeah so the forwarding would be affected at an LSR or, or egress LAR or processed, but um. But the ingress LDR has to be kind of aware of this this data, doesn't it? To 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 put a put an indicator in there and possibly um, a something else there that is not, you know, obviously it is it's some kind of processed version of the data. So I was going to go there. So it's actually it's data put into the packet by the ingress LSR, and that is being processed by egress LSR or any LSR, egress LER or any LSR. It's an LER, isn't it, actually? What? You are you very faint. I can't hear you. Uh, you carry on, I'll try and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I think that, I think... I think that's correct um, because we're not expecting. We're, we're putting some kind of representation of some information in, um, which is inserted by the ingress LSR along with an identifier. Sorry, uh, an indicator that that representation exists. Um, it's not. It's not. What I mean is, it's not. The indicator is not saying. Go and look at layer five or something and process that raw. It's saying there is some um, some header there or something that 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 is containing your ancillary data. Matthew, question: Are you uh, okay? I think I'm misunderstanding what Loa is trying to say. Are we saying that? Uh, the the ingress LDR doesn't process the actions because I'm concerned if it is not. No, if it's not, I don't think so. Okay, so the way I read the sentence, I'm happy with it. Uh, the LDR can be a ingress or egress, and or any uh, or LSR, which can be in any transit. Uh, well, but the point no... that this needs to be captured is that it's the ingress LDR that actually uh, adds the data or actually yeah the indicator it may not be the english LER that adds it it may be an LER in another network that added it and we were doing carrier's carrier 
Oh, yes. Okay. So, so this is why we're words, silent on this. Yeah. So with some words missing around, that's probably fine, but. Uh, right. So, so I think let's just take the sentence apart. Data relating to the MPLS packet that may may be used to affect forwarding or other processing of that packet. We agree with that. Yeah. All right. Um, and then we're conditioning that to say that that processing may happen at an LER or an LSR. So we're yeah. saying basically it can be any router that any labels any 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 node in the any node that the packet goes past that may be dealing with this ancillary data so so i think uh, that I first think, I, th I think it's correct basically but when an ler actually are not adding the uh, the indicator of the data it's not really acting as an ler Okay, but, it, but LSR is included as well. So it's affecting, yeah. it's going to affect the forwarding or other processing of that packet at either the LER, actually, that sh I suppose that should be the egress LER or any or, or any LSR. Uh, yeah, that's what, that's what, that's what I, don't, I, I don't agree with that. I think the ingress might also need to process it. Yes, or, yes. The, an example is you add the ancillary data on the ingress. Yep. But then we need to timestamp maybe um, on the egress port uh, of the ingress LSR. Yeah. So, yeah, it's possible that. Ingress... Well, actually, that, that should be either uh, should be either at an LER or LSR. Yeah. Um, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Does that then work? Yeah, it, it works for me. But, uh, okay, so I'm confused on a higher level now. Um, I didn't realize that the uh, ingress LER was actually doing in the process, but you're right. Well, it certainly might be pushing it, but it may well do some other operations as a result of doing the push. I don't yeah, know if I think a timestamp counts in what we were thinking about here, though. I mean, that's just about no, 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 no. Matthew, even the, uh, you know, slice, uh, uh, you know, providing QoS, for example, you know, having a uh, QoS identifier in the ancillary data, uh, you still need to provide that uh, QoS um, policy on the ingress port, egress port of the ingress yeah. LSR. Yeah, but that's getting into that, 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 there are multiple ways of doing that. It doesn't have to be done by looking at the, the ancillary data itself. It could be whatever context you've derived. Um, I'm just doing some example. kind of forwarding yeah. class, right? The, 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 but I mean, you don't, that you would then use to select, I mean, that's entirely up to the policy, the QoS policy. So, um, it would be, you know, I mean, the, the, the QoS policy doesn't necessarily classify, doesn't classify an egress. Well, if you say, reclassify, an, reclassify an egress. It, the idea is you, you identify the packet belonging to that uh, slice, and then you give it the uh, uh, proper treatment. Yeah, I understand that, but... Um... But I think Stuart had a text that actually captures most of what he said. I, I'm okay with, uh, uh, yeah, the way it is now, I thought Matthew is arguing ingress should be excluded. No, I just didn't think. No, I'm not. I mean, I, I just wasn't sure that the. So, uh, so look, I, I think we may be overanalyzing this. We agree that an LSR may do some forwarding actions as a result of this data. And we certainly agree that an LSR may do it. So, do we need? You know, are, are we being over precise here? Yeah. I don't really know. My concern is, where do we capture this type of discussion? Well, Come that will be in the. I would like to put that in the framework. 
Okay. Which we do need to get started. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I think the requirements should be for this should be reasonably general, and then um, for this particular point, and then we'll flesh it out in the in the framework. Yeah, that's how I would like to to, to address it for sure. Fine. I, I have started up a framework. I actually started twice. I took it back first time because there were some changes that I haven't captured. But I'm working on something now. I will circulate that uh, when I get up to full speed. Great. Okay, great. I know that uh, Matthew and I, I think, are both very much interested in working on the framework. Yeah, I hope so. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, so I, uh, we've got the first sentence done. So then, <laughs> how about the second sentence? Is that okay? This data may be implicit i.e. context specific, encoded within the label stack and or after the bottom of the label stack. And they have two different um, implicit by implicit. I, uh, you know, we mean things like um, um, where the, uh, if there were an indicator bit, if we chose that mechanism, if merely the presence of the indicator bit implied the, um, um, that, that there was ancillary data present in some form. A clarification, uh, Stewart. When you say implicit, are you saying that the data is signaled out of band, or it's not carried? No, I was thinking more. I was. I think we were thinking more. No fast reroute is one of yours, right? You just have yeah. a single bit. Um, so the ancillary data that that says this packet is not to be further fast rerouted is present because the bit is present. Okay. Okay, I see. I again, you know, we're we're open to further clarification, but uh, we have to capture all the cases, and we have to do it in the most general text. In that is our view. Otherwise, we get into solution land. I I, I don't understand context specific. Uh, what context are we talking? Context of the label? Yes. Forming label. Yeah. For or okay. the context of the context of the thing that contains it. But I thought, you know, the example you gave is a standardized action uh, that we that doesn't. Uh, OK, so the context of a standardized. No, no the, I, I think what we meant here was that it might be implicit, for example, the VPN service that you're carrying or the PV service that you're. Oh, OK, OK, is yeah. the context because. Um, Oh no, I, I I see what you mean. So are you, are you, would we argue that, for example, looking at the transport port is implicit ancillary data? Could be. Um, it's anything that isn't directly encoded necessarily in the. Right. You know, it's control plane. It might be control plane information related to something that you're right. transporting over that LSP. Okay, so it's not carried in the packet, but it's signaled out of band. Uh, Could be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But 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 it's the context is the forwarding label, or I don't know what the context specific is. The context is carried with what, with the top label. No, not necessarily. If it's um, if it's a pseudo -R, it's not. So you might. What I mean is, you may be inserting ancillary data. So ingress, okay. ingress LER, you certainly do know what all of the VPN labels are. So, you know, so you may say you may for a given VPN simply insert a particular ancillary data, which might be based on some classification or something that you're doing on on that service. So. Um, OK, I understand that. It's, 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 yeah, it's a it, it's a um, sim simply a context of the of the service that you're carrying over the LSP, I guess. Or it might be some other control plane stuff. Context of the LSP, in fact, it could be anything. It's just not necessarily explicit explicitly encoded in the, um, the yeah, in the packet. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, my question is uh, uh even is a single uh bit or is some uh, 
um, other way to uh, to indicate that isn't that still con can be considered as uh, encoded with within the label stack, or uh, I see maybe that's that's there there are still in stack data. Um, so I'm, I'm confused why that's considered implicit or uh, uh, rather than the encoded within the label stack. Well, the context specific stuff. Well, it could be um, yeah, I, I see your point there, um, in the sense that the VPN label is a it carries the context in a way. Um, But Matthew, uh, the, the the extended ancillary data will not be carried in the packet. Uh, in that case, it will be signaled, like the mm, it will be signaled in control plane, right? So I'm not sure what. what, what... No, no, not necessarily because the. So you may have some. You may insert something in the label stack that is the result of some processing on the service that you're carrying. Wouldn't um, that be the second uh, the second uh, item in your sentence encoded within the label stack? That's encoded within the label stack. Um, but you could you could in the case of uh, so pseudo y you could you you could signal um, you could you could do some control plane extensions to signal a change in forwarding for a given label that isn't um necessarily what would normally occur for that label so you're not actually inserting anything in anything new in the label stack right but you may change the forwarding of the pseudo wire um based on that so Which is only in the, which may be something about the treatment that that pseudo where has at at the, I guess that's really the way you exchange the meaning of the ancillary data there. Um, Stuart, do you remember what if we had a specific thing in mind here for the, this con the implicit context specific data? Uh, I'm trying to reverse back to where we were. Um, I, I I think that so, some aspect of the payload may well be implicit. A good example of implicit uh, ancillary data. Uh, I mean, certainly you can have ancillary data that you operate on as a result of one of these operations that is there in some other format other than in our standard ancillary data format. So you could certainly have something that's part of the packet that may cause us to do an ancillary data sort of operation. I mean, we do it all the time with load balancing. Um, what we would normally do is to put this in brackets and then move on. Yeah. I think I'll do that because the time is. Oh, I'd use the other the, the convention turns out has is the other sort of bracket, isn't it? That's the United Nations Convention on unagreed data, unagreed text, which I'm sure there's going to be loads of in the next few days. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, but maybe we should move on. We'll come try and come discuss this offline. Um, or, or come up with a better for it, so mm -hmm. more specific example. Okay. Okay.
Okay, so the next two definitions for in-stack and out and post-stack were just clarified. One thing we did add was what we read a little bit of clarification what we meant by post stack here to say that we're, we're not prescribing whether that post stack data proceeds or follows any other protocol structure such as a control word or ACH. Yeah, this is particularly close to our heart given the, the major area that we, that we uh, both used to work in. So, um, um we don't want to be prescriptive in terms of whether it where it goes um, either before or after for example the control word so um we deliberately said we're not prescriptive about it and then later on in the engineering phase the the, the construction phase as it were it can be decided what the heck you do with the pseudo wire or a, a debt net um um uh packet people understand yeah and, and you, you don't want to mention anything about uh you know having the ash uh ach data uh with this post stack data coexist the together. document does not prescribe does not prescribe whether post act data proceeds or follows any other protocol structure, such as control word or ACH. And that covers pseudo wire and debt and debt net, I think. And we're not gonna we are not in requirements gonna say where where it goes. It's up to the protocol designers to say where it fits best. Or it may turn we may get drilled down to that level of detail in the framework, I don't know, but um requirements doesn't need to make that choice do we make a choice on hop by hop uh post stack data versus uh, versus end to end post stack data on the order where should it appear sorry um the hop by hop post stack data versus yeah. end to end stack data we, 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 we are we are again i i don't think we're going to comment on it in the requirements document are we because that's a design I, decision. is it okay i thought hop by hop should appear before uh, that's a design okay. decision you could do it either way it might not be very efficient but you could look at every single item and decide whether it was hop by hop and whether you were going to process it or not it may not be the best way to do it, but you could do it like that. And it's not the job of the requirements draft to specify which design um, solution you pick. Okay. The, well, the requirement is not to be efficient. Okay. I'm, I'm fine. That's, no, no, uh, no. That was a little unfair, that. And we're trying to be general here. I'm um, okay as long as we tackle that in the design or the framework. Yeah, let's do that in framework or in, in, in actual design. And remember, our goal is not to push ourselves into a corner. Or rather to push some future engineer into a corner. Okay. Okay, are we okay with, so we're okay with post date data. Ancillary data, are we okay with that? Indicator, you mean? AC indicator. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some designs would indicate the type, uh, other designs would not. And we're trying to not resolve that in the requirements document. Uh, question, uh, Stewart, and that was raised in the past. Yeah. Is the indicator um is it a fun uh, a, an action indicator uh, or is it a generic that can indicate to multiple actions or in this we, item we are, here the, requir the requirements document is silent on that it simply saying that there may be an indicator or many one or more right it could be one more or none it can be not one or infinity as far as this document is concerned. It's just saying what they are so we can talk about them later on. 
but there could be naught one or infinity and any and all of those are viable approaches to the, to the design okay okay i'm okay yeah yeah all right um i think there are a lot of changes in the background um So you know what uh, we could do? We could get the RFC diff tool up and look at the two look at the two differences if that made it easier for people. So actually we can we can do that text wise on uh GitHub. Okay. Because Tarek upload when Tarek uploaded Yeah. The original one, uh, um, I'm just like, thinking it might be easier than trying to remember what we changed. I'll try to see if it generated the diff. Uh, it, it did, but it, the trouble is that it, it got it, it's not very accurate, Stuart, because it because um, the original was in XML. Well, yeah, but if we go on to the RS, if we go on to the IETF site, we can do we go to history. We can do the diffs, and we can see exactly what we changed. Yeah. And the, okay. if that if people are agreeable to that. Yeah, that's good. Trying to see if there is an easy way to generate it. RFC diff tool, right? Yeah, the RFC diff tool in um if you go to the history of if you go to data tracker history. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The revision. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then you 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 it will just do it. Yeah. I guess this is what it's um, are you gonna sh do that, uh, Matthew? Yeah, I'm just looking for that. I'm just looking for it before I share it. Um I, okay. It's just because on the tracker, because the tools page is I don't know what's up with tools these days. Um but we used to do that. Doesn't it do it anymore? Uh, I I, did, I have it. Uh, I I passed the link. If you click on it, it'll generate the. I mean, data tracker. Okay. Um, let me just sh unshare this, and then I can. Oh, you it. put it in chat, didn't you? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Stop sharing this thing and reshare. Another one. What is that? Yeah, probably not the right thing to do at this meeting, unless it's anything of a particular one. But we did go through and scrub all the two one one nine language. Yeah. All right, yeah, it's going to be really small. Just see if I can get that zoomed in at all. Oh, come on. Right. Right. Is that visible? Is that readable? Yes. Okay. Well, I think you may be missing some on the right, but it's basically readable. Uh, okay. Uh, no. Make it the notch. That's, that's, that's it. Perfect. All right. Oh. Now. Well, you would, I envy you. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I can, yeah, I mean, the font is small for me. Uh, okay. If uh, we can proceed, I can, I have a copy open on my site. I will, well, I can make it even bigger. Um, that doesn't I'll go across as well. Yeah, and now you have to make this. Do it without, yeah, yeah, it's about as big as I can do it without. Um, oh. I see. Then, then yeah, they, uh, revert back. I mean, I'm fine. I'll squint and yeah, it just it doesn't give me. Um, I wonder. No, no yeah, let's stick to. This zoom in or zoom out doesn't give me a yeah, it doesn't give me a nice percentage. A slider on. Okay. Oh wait a minute, yes it does. Where'd it go? Right, 
Let's see if I can do something here. No, it's funny. All right, we'll live with that, I guess. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so. Uh, that's a typo. The, 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 that's a typo, that one. Okay. Maybe the, the typo's up to the big block that changes about here. Yeah. I think that there's... Right, so we there was a comment about should we be using a, um, a solution document in here? And we, yeah. we, we added some text to clarify that the only piece of that document that is relevant to this discussion are the requirements and issues that were um, um, stated in it. I mean, the, the, the alternative um, is to uh, actually take the text out and uh, put it in an appendix to here, if that, if that is what you would prefer, or put it in the body here, if that's what you prefer. But um, we thought there was useful stuff in there and we uh, that we wanted to refer to, uh, but we wanted to make it clear to the commenter, commentator, I suppose, that um, we were not endorsing its solution. We're not rejecting it either, by the way, but we're just saying that this document does not endorse it. So you're endorsing the requirements in the document? Yeah, we're saying that, yes, we're saying that the requirements in that document are useful. Okay, I, I haven't, you know, do we need to review the requirements in that document? I don't know, I think uh, it's only, I think it's only, um... A use cases actually, it's isn't not it? Requ there's not requirements in that document. I think it states some of the issues that right. have have uh, led to this work. Yes. So it's it's not we're not referencing that at all to say it contains requirements that are, you know, by reference um, normative in this document. I think it's just an informational. I think it's just an informational reference anyway. It's yeah, just, it is. I'm pretty certain it is. Yeah, this is purely descriptive text, say, giving us some, mot you know, motivation. I mean, how how use on the call? We could go and take some of the stuff we wanted and put it in here. I'd rather do that if there is uh, requirements you want to bring in, you know, bring it but, in. I don't. It's not requirements. It's simply summarizing the issues with existing solutions. Yeah, no, no, no. I think the think think we could bring those issues over if that is what people would prefer, and then and and put a reference to where we got it from. Okay. Yeah, we could we could quote the text. If I use okay with that. Yeah. Well, we do. Yeah, I'm yeah. actually. We actually do. Yeah. It doesn't. Sorry, we do. These two par following paragraphs are. I think, Oh, right, right, we do, yes. Indented. Yeah, they were indented on the original, and they're not indented on this one, Stuart. Oh, think. right, okay, we'll fix that. We'll yeah. fix that. Um, I'm, I'm a bit concerned about having text in two places. Of course, we could have independent Yeah, but we don't, know, we don't know that Song MPLS extension header will go all the way to RFC, whereas we, we hope yeah, I understand, this will. but we actually... Uh, should if we do this we should put something in the extension headed document and say that uh, the normative text or whatever it is uh, is found in the requirements well you, you should, oh, you mean, this isn't normative this is not this is not normative it's not a requirement it's simply a bit of background information it's only it's only it's motivational yeah. stuff it's not yeah, this this is not at all a requirement. I, I was using uh, the normative in mm. some slightly different meaning. I mean, I mean, so that it, 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 it's we could reword this so that we say where we got it, where we got the um, where we got it from, but make this the normative version, and you and um, the and draft song could um point to the point across this way instead yeah that's probably the right way of doing it but you're an author on that as well aren't you yeah all right uh, but so that means that we kind of remove the reference and then draft song just re re refers to this yep, yep. 
Yeah. All right. No, that, that makes sense. Okay. okay. How are so, you? Do you have a comment on that? I think I just you're gonna do. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Okay, fine. Um, move the requirements language to its more conventional place in the document. Is the next mm -hmm. that big change? Uh, I think this is just a bit of change in phraseology, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's just improving the English a bit. Okay, so I think we can get down to requirement two, can't we now? Yeah. So requirement two is a bit of 2119 and then adding references to 3031 and 3032 to point to the MPLS architecture. Okay, requirement three uh, clarifies the, um, the, the the mechanism of last resort text by saying that really this is about minimizing the number of new SPL, SPLs that, that are allocated. Okay, are you okay with three? Yes. Um, Four um, is just 2119. Five. Five. We did quite a lot of work on five. Um, uh, so I, an API. Go on. Sorry, five. I I'm started to I started to read it and I see yeah. must not uh, with all caps. I don't agree with that. Hang on. I need to let, let my daughter in order to collect the dogs. Hang on. Carrot, what did you not agree to? You must not. Uh, the, the idea of uh, you, 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 the packet can traverse a node that does not know how to process a ancillary data. It's it, it's for uh, you know brownfield deployments as well as uh, you know uh, as well as you know the different ancillary data might be supported by different nodes. I, I think that's really a problem with the word deliberate rather than the must not. Uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, maybe I agree with Tara that the mark capital must not is too strong. There are actually two cases. Uh, some nodes may, uh, may, may be able to understand that there are some AD uh, ancillary data in the packet. But for some of the data, they cannot process it. Either uh, they are not capable of that, or they have not uh, decided yeah. to do that. So in that case, they, they can- Sorry, I tend to go and do a bit domestic. Uh, it's, it's, it's the top of stack. I think it's the top of stack thing here, because if you if you deliver a, a, um, um, a packet with a, a an unknown label top of stack, it will perform, it, it, you know, and you don't know what it's going to do with this. If it happens to match something that's in an ILM, say it might forward it somewhere that you're unexpected, or it, or it may just drop it. If it's a special purpose label that's top of the stack uh, that it doesn't understand, it'll just drop it. That's MPLS behavior today. So, yeah, so I mean, that's the problem, right? It's the top of stack thing. So if, because normal, normally you either just do a, you know, you look up what's in the top of the stack and you decide whether you're going to swap it or or, or do some other function based on it. We're not dictating top of stack behavior here, right? I mean, we're talking about- no, I, know. I know, but this is just a statement of, this is this is a kind of basically what this is saying is that you, you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't forward a packet with an ADI as top of stack towards a node that you know is, is understand it. Yeah. 
Because uh, it's just going to it's just going to afford it somewhere unexpected, or it's going to drop it. No, I mean that's an uh, uh, we we I thought we discussed that it's per action. So you can define the behavior per action: either drop the packet or best you know treat it. Mm -hmm. That's the change. That's the change to the MPLS architecture, right? Is to be able to. I mean, take an example. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mm, the entropy label. Uh, some but some that's top of stack. Yeah, but but who says it's top of stack? I I didn't see the top of stack uh, in your sentence. An ADI must not become top of stack at a node. And we could rephrase it maybe, but what we're saying really, I think, is. Is, I mean, is don't arbitrarily forward forward a pack don't forward a packet to a node that you do not think or you have not confirmed in some way or there's not some configuration or context that tells you it can process that idea I'm, I'm arguing I might be on purpose doing this. So I want to throw a second. We, what we said here, an ADI must not become top of stack at a node that does not understand it. Yeah. So if it does understand it, it can be the top of stack. Yeah, I, I see the top of stack. <laughs> okay, that's. I think I read the second bullet. Uh, first bullet is saying top of stack, but the first sentence is nothing. I'm silent. It's saying an NADI mu data must not be delivered. And then you. Wait, 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 where are we? Where are we? An ADI. Yeah, they, yeah. clarification. We so so the the two the two bullets in 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 requirement five are kind of clarifications on on the first one, but in fact that narrow the scope of it somewhat. Um, maybe we don't need the first. On ADI, well, I think it's reason. It's, I think the first one is a reasonable requirement to have. It's certainly at least, it, it's it, it it's, at least it's harm. It, it's harmless at worst. So don't send us. It, it's a requirement not to send a one of these new things. To a node that can't figure out how to get rid of it correctly, I agree with that. So disposition of that ancillary data, I have to, yeah, I have to have knowledge. Uh, but that that's only at the disposition time. Well, that's also true. If, if an ADI is top of stack, you're going to have to dispose of it. Uh, it might you might do, the top of stack might be a forwarding label, and then uh, uh, hang on, the ADI is the top of stack. All right. No, the, who said the, it's a top of stack? An ADI must not become top of stack at a node that does not understand the ADI. Okay, you're saying it must not become top of stack. Okay, yeah. so yeah, become right. It might not be the top of stack, but after processing, it might be exposed. Yes. Yeah, so, so if you pop the top of stack and then find the next thing is uh, an ADI, you had better understand what to do with it. Yes, yeah, that's fine. And yeah, in my opinion is okay. But but the first sentence does not yeah, I, I'm not I mean the the beginning of the sentence it, it's not So which sentence? That, number five. If I start reading it, an EDI mm -hmm. or ancillary data must not be delivered. Um to a the, node that is not capable of processing it. So delivered what does it mean by delivered? If it means um, that, it, that that that's its final resting place. Ah, okay. I didn't hear. It. Okay, so, so, that's where I'm confused. Okay, Stuart. Yeah. Um, it occurs to me that this this what you're saying here is actually a design choice. Okay. Which I don't think belongs in the requirement. Okay. Why do you think it's a design choice? Because well, do you think do you think it would ever occur that you could deliver it to something that didn't understand no, no, no. it? No, no. What I'm what the the thing I'm uh, questioning. You're talking about what you're saying is you're putting the ancillary data indicator in the label stack. That's a design choice. That, 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 and we're deliberately trying not to make that design choice. Um, well. An ADI in the label stack is a design choice. We allowed it as one of the options earlier on. I'm sorry. I think I believe believe we allow that. I agree. It's a, a design choice. You know, but, because 
Uh, well, we could proceed. It's one of the valid design choices that's right, allowed. Right, 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 right. So we could we could add some text in there that says if the ADI is included in the label stack, that ADI must not become top of stack at a note that's, that does not understand. That's better, you know. Or when you talk about ADIs, you can indicate that, and or an in stack ADI. Yeah, that's fine. You know, because what we have been saying is when you def define a particular network action, you just you define all of the characteristics of its ancillary data. So you don't actually have to put anything in the stack. Okay, so we could so we I think we could, if we just made that an an in stack ADI must not become, then I think that addresses everyone's concerns there, doesn't it? That's that's fine. Okay. One thing that back to the delivered, um, I understand when you say delivered means uh, it's final disposition node, uh, but sometimes the yeah. data traverses a transit node that needs pro to process it. Yeah. Uh, that's not delivered though. Oh, well, what do you call we, that? Uh, in... I mean, just read the sentence and tell me if that doesn't cover the mm. delivering of the ancillary data to a transit node. Well, what you really want to say is that the person which um, gets rid of the ancillary data needs to understand it. I agree with that, John. Yes. <laughs> Whatever any language or uh, English yes. you want to say it, yeah. Um, that's a bit, we're a bit, um, which, which comes first here, because you, you just said that the, 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 the node that has the data delivered to it needs to be able to process it. But then the problem is if you deliver it to a, if you forward it, deliver it or forward it through, forward it towards a node that doesn't understand it. Um, you just include the term egress. So, we, we, which which fraction of this of, of, of section of, of, of requirement five are we dealing with here? The, the, I mean, you mean it, you need to make a distinction between a transit router and an egress router, right? And the assumption is that the egress router. Is going to have to remove the ancillary data from the label stack. And so what oh, well, well, uh, is, the, ancillary, the egress is going to have to re, 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 get rid of the ancillary data wherever it is. Then, then what you probably should be saying, you're, you should define what you mean by egress. And what egress means is the node which removes the ancillary data from the uh, MPLS label stack and post stack data. And the sentence that you have there, if you say to a node, uh, a yes. is a, a node is a generic node. So if you can put to a, uh, like John is saying, that node that gets rid of that data. Yes. In other words, you can call it the disposition P, uh, router or the egress router, but it's the one that has to deal with the ancillary data. Yeah. It's it's the one that is is basically it's exposed to. Correct. Yeah. Um. And I, I actually like disposition because that's what is what we're trying to talk yeah. about. Yeah. So, in order to make some progress today. Do we need to put a square bracket around requirement five and then go away and work on it some more? That's fine with me. Fine by, by me as well. Yeah, I'm doing that um, in the background yeah. on the. Okay, thank you. Uh, but the two well, we're, 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 we will willingly take suggested text. Yeah, but the, the, I think the two points are we need to talk about a disposition router. And we need to indicate that uh, if the ancillary data indicator is in the stack. So possibly these are two requirements actually. Yeah. So maybe we should split the requirements. 
Sorry, sorry, John, I didn't catch your last part of your sentence. The disposition oh, it was, rate around. It was my, my, my first point, which is the ancillary data may not actually be in the label. The, the ancillary data indicator may not actually be in the stamp. Let's work this through. We tried to do too much, I think, in a simple uh, but complex, um, short, simple, complex statement. Um, maybe we need to split it up into a few bits and pieces, and then, if nothing else, that will tell us where we disagree. So, shall we have another go at getting it right, and uh, then come back for further discussion? Yeah. Okay, good. So six is kind of a discussion we've already had today, that you have to be careful with um, ancillary data and um, control word, stroke, whatever. But okay, what's six. Well, Care must be taken in the coexistence of ancillary data and existing post-stack data mechanisms. Okay, so just alert. It's alerting. And, and the, it's and, alerting oh. the designer that they have to watch out for this. Okay. That's fine. Okay. A button, John. Talk about six, right? Yeah, yeah, just six. Yeah, I, I was just, you said it with, with me expecting a butt to come. Okay, so. No, 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 no. I was just saying, I, I wanted to, I thought six was fine. Good. Okay. Um. Right. So the next one is saying, don't put this stuff you need to read so far down the stack. You can't get to it at the node that needs to get to it. Um, that, it looks a little bit also like a design decision. Um. Well, I suppose it is, but on the other hand, could you ever consider designing it without thinking about that? Well, I, I guess what implicitly Seven is saying that there's only one copy of ancillary data in the label stack. No, it's not saying that at all, I don't think. Mechanisms required to determine that all nodes that need to process the ancillary data can read the required distance into the packet at that node. So if they can't, if you determine that that node can't reach okay. it, you better put it in again. Okay. I just don't want to. Maybe I'm just being too fussy. No, 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 no. Your 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 input is always welcome. Um, I think I don't know if you did. I just you know I think it's fine. We're good. Okay. Okay. Eight. One, one comment. Sorry, and no, don't move yet. Uh, uh, all nodes. So the all there. Uh, you know, I, I'm. Can we can we just scratch out all and just say that nodes that need to process. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm yeah. All nodes that need to process, uh, maybe that's a thing. Uh, but yeah, I would just nodes that need to process this data. Replace all with a, and node with node. Maybe that's okay as well. Yeah, and no or one. any. So would, would any would you uh, consider any node? No, that, I mean now all nodes is actually I think the most is, is actually the correct degree of prescription, isn't it? If you, you, you've got multiple nodes on the path, some of them need to look at it, some of them don't. All those that need to look at it need to meet this, uh, need to, to be able to actually look at it. What I found, Stuart, is that in writing, um, when, when writing descriptions of things, it's better to always use the singular. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just our styles or something. I mean, 
I the um, a node that needs to process it. Does that include this complete set of nodes that need to process it? To me, it does. Or yeah, that may just be. It may, actually, it may be. You, to, to, hey, Stuart. What? If you yeah. if you replaced the all with any, and made nodes singular, I'd be happy. Yeah, I think that would be okay. I was thinking of two countries separated by a common language. Yeah, I'm not sure I really see the difference here in this. It's a, um, who's what about what said each node that needs to process it? That's good. All right, so it's going to be each node that needs to process the auxiliary data can read. Okay. I'm just editing the, the, M, the MD in the. While you're doing that, Matthew, can we look at eight? Is eight a given? When ancillary data is present in the MPLS label stack, i.e. the stack itself, a mechanism is required to indicate its presence. That's good. Yep. Nine is good. Nine. Good. That's good. Good. Ten good? Nine, I'm going through. A mechanism is required, whatever that mechanism is. Yeah. Which one are you on, uh, Tarek? On I'm on nine, and I'm agreeing with it. Uh, okay. But ten. Ten's okay. Eleven. Uh, Eleven is a, 11's a little problematic. All right. I think the same fix is if the ancillary data indicator is in the MPLS label stack. Okay. Uh, I, you, you're, you're right. I, I, I agree with you. I concur with that. And then the rest suffix is presumably okay, which is basically saying don't break MPLS base architecture. And, and of course, we can always override that at a later date. But we'd have there would have to be appropriate justification. You're you're uh, stating that it must not, uh, so you're not allowing any override, and not getting the message. It should be consistent with the architecture. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I I think what I want to do, uh, what what I think we should do, is to make it a high barrier to entry to change the MPLS architecture. Yeah. Okay. Twelve okay? Twelve okay. Yeah, twelve twelve fine. Thirteen's fine. Thirteen. Thirteen is fine. Uh fourteen and fifteen. Um it's it's the same complaint I had before. Can, can I ask a question oh. on uh atom eleven? Uh one? eleven. So what what what's considered the existing MPS data plane operations? Uh, anything that's been defined up to the date of publication today, I suppose. Uh, then uh, this sentence confused me. Why we sh we should make it clear we should use uh, this? Um, I mean, certainly if there are. Um, existing operations they, they can be used, and uh, also maybe uh, the the um, um, I, I don't know. Maybe they introduce some new operations to the data. Right. Plane. So we've said well, should right, and ancillary data indicators should make use of existing data plane operations. So that's the primary part of the requirement. If extensions to the MPLS data planes are required, they must not be inconsistent with the MPLS architecture 3031 or 3032. That is to say, they better not break um, operation of uh, ordinary uh, MPLS as it exists today. Okay. 
Um, yeah, we just so if said... you had if you had an LSP um, where uh, we were doing our thing from A to B, and C to D used a piece of that LSP on its path, there shouldn't be an inconsistency that stopped that original LSP still working. Yeah, that's a, that's a normal uh, MPS operation, but uh, exactly. I, I I can see why ADI is using that. It just doesn't um, impede that or um, conflict with that. But uh, are we talking about the first part of the sentence or the first part of the requirement or the second part? So I think uh, it's the first part. Right. The first sentence. Yeah. All right, so let's say we should try, we should make use of existing data plane operations. So what should means in IETF parlance is try very hard to make this so. So a should, you can always override a should, but you have to explain why you want to do it. So should is, you know, a take care operation, if you like, in the design. Okay, um, uh, I'm just a, a bit confused about that. Well, should is not a must. Should is not a required. Should is, it's a jolly good idea. Please try and do it. Uh, would others disagree with that? With that reading? Uh, yeah, yes, I, it's just a uh, maybe if there's some uh, example on the. Uh, existing MPS data plane operation will make it more clear, but uh, you have explained maybe. Um, yeah. Actually, Stuart. Yeah. Um, upon reflection, yes. the stuff we're doing here is new. So by definition, it's changing the MPLS data plane. Right, so how do we, I mean, what this is about is no gratuitous changes and don't stop being backwards compatible. In other words, don't break, don't, don't change things unless you have to change them. And don't yeah, stop or, uh, yeah, and make sure the well, legacy traffic in this network can still work. Yeah. I, I guess, uh, but, Is this one to break out and discuss on the list? Yeah, probably. So can we bracket it? And um, um, I suppose what we should do is to, um, when we look at the text, put the old text and the replacement text and encourage people to discuss. And Matthew's still there. All right, so where are we up to? That was 11 we were discussing. We're okay with 12? We okay with 13? Yeah. Okay. I heard some comments around 14. Um, this looks a little bit like a design choice. Mm -hmm. 14 as well from me. Uh, you're assuming that only LER can add ADIs? And my complaint was that you're it's a design choice to insert ADIs. Yeah, I think based on our previous, if, if you, if, if the, if the mechanism for ADIs is. Yeah, that would have to be changed to be consistent with our earlier decision, which is we're not. A mechanism is required to enable an LFR indicator. My another question is that uh, have we decided to uh, only allow the LER to uh, initiate or uh, insert this ADI, or uh, we we shall also consider Actually, um, LSR can also do that. What we uh, what we did in EVPN is use the terms imposition and disposition. I'll 
give this me is a, yeah. just a suggestion. So a node that's imposing ADIs rather than promoting it to LDR or LSR. Uh, Say that a node is, if you like, um, or a node. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Maybe that makes more sense because yeah. I think what we're saying, I mean, if, if the mechanism is an ADI in somewhere buried in the label stack, an LSR wouldn't do it because an LSR is just doing a label swap. Well, if we just say a node, then we finesse the whole problem, don't we? Yeah, that's fine. But we still have the, the issue of inserting ADIs. Whether that's allowed or not. Well, no, whether that's, that looks, it looks like a design choice. Oh, right, 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 right. If ADI, if in stack ADIs, I think that's what we should be saying, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and, and should we just make a generic comment that we'll look at all cases of ADI and make sure that uh, the designers can choose whether they use the mechanism or not? Correct. Okay, I see 16 here, which is, I, I'm happy. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I think uh, the, uh, my question is not uh, answered yet. Shall we allow the LSR to invert ADI also? Because I can, I can envision some use case you want just to perhaps just monitor a link on the uh, label switch plus. Then it's possible you just uh, Add some data in uh, uh, the the upstream LSR, and maybe just uh, delete it in the upstream so, LSRs. Well, you had better make we, sure you know that you can get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. So that's because this is only yeah. Maybe it's just the uh, the downstream LSR will remove it, this or is, the egress LSR yeah. will re remove it. But uh, so, I, so this, this is the this old, is the old SRV six argument yet again, isn't it? No, this is this goes back further. This is this is the segment monitoring argument for MPLS TP. Oh right, yes, yes, yes. And and the way we the way we addressed it was, um, essentially to push an additional label. So it's not a, um, as far as I recall, so you're not actually inserting anything in the label stack. You're pushing another label that represents that segment. So um. So it still maintains this this principle. Mm. So there are ways of doing this without burying labels in the you know inside the label stack. So we will make sure that we address the with some text somewhere or other that it's a design choice whether you use in stack ADIs. Uh, and we may put this everywhere in the document, or I suppose we could put a headline statement somewhere or other, uh, requirement one, it is a design choice whether you do this um, if uh, comments about the ADI are not applicable to you because of your that design decision, then do you follow? Yeah, that should be um, job one. Job one, yeah, yeah. Well, it will certainly be very early in the document, that's for sure. So question, if you're actually creating, if you're pushing another label, that is yes. uh, actually equivalent to create a tunnel, isn't it? Yep. So you must be allowed to put uh, indicators and data in for that tunnel. Right, right, right. But you may have to close the stack and start again. So, if uh, I was that, that's the sign, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, certainly I can push a tunnel on the top it, with an S bit set and some ancillary data, and then uh, carry the original stack as the payload for that new stack. But my, my problem, problem is that you you are effectively an LER if you do that. Yes, 
but that is so, probably the clean, that is probably the cleanest way of doing mid path ancillary data addition. But and you mean what what um, Matthew uh, described for um, uh, SPME? Um, actually, it's sorry. Excuse me a second. I need to go and do something. Point of order. How many requirements do we have left? The point is that we are running out of time. Yeah. yeah we've got quite a few still. Um... Okay, so we need to split that up. Maybe we should um we have a bit of time in the next next week. Uh, so, sorry, Matthew, I had to step off to a, a second to talk to someone about getting some heating back in my house. Um, Stuart? Yeah. Are you saying what, another call on this? Yeah, I just had a question about your previous statement. Um, now, wait, wait, before John, you... we're discussing the point of order first. So, uh, we can get back to that. But uh, I think that Matthew suggested that we actually run an extra meeting ne next week. Well, I don't know about next. I don't know how much time people have got, but if, or if, or if we could take a bit of time from the next meet, next uh, meeting. I think. I think the, the actually every meeting is pretty stuff uh, yeah. now. So if we want to create extra time, it's probably next extra, extra meeting. Yeah, I think that might be the most efficient way of getting through this to stand any chance of getting everyone's feedback and a new version out for the next for the next uh, IET for the ITF. Uh, I'm trying to figure out when we can have that meeting. For me, Wednesday or Wednesday would work. Talking about the same time uh, slot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tuesday. Uh, yeah, my meeting on Tuesday afternoon got cancelled, so Tuesday or Wednesday would work for me. Um. There's a Wednesday would be best for me. I've got okay. on the... for some reason I'm already so, trying okay. to look, so. Yeah, I definitely can't do Tuesday. Wednesday would be okay. Oh, no, no, Wednesday wouldn't be okay. No. No? How about no. Monday? How about Monday? Uh, yes, Monday at the same time. Yeah, Monday. Talk about Monday. Are we good for Monday? Okay, we can. Uh, are we good for Monday? Is that what everyone is agreeing on? Uh, actually, I'm asking you. Okay, with Monday personally. Uh, okay, so Perry, can you set up the meeting on Monday? Send out the agenda that is actually uh, just continued mm -hmm. requirement yeah. discussion. I can do that. Some. So we want to. We want one hour slot. One hour uh, type of thing. This is one and a half hours. Uh, our meeting, our regular meeting. I think I think you can book one and a half hour. We don't need to use it. Uh, okay. I, I, I suspect we won't. Given the rate of progress, I suspect we won't finish in just an hour, will we? Okay, I'll book it for one. Actually, there's thirty. There are thirty-four requirements, and we're on seventeen. Yeah, uh, but we spent a lot of time talking about introductory text, so. Um... Well, I mean, I mean, all you can do is to book the time, and um... yeah, that's what I was going to do. Exactly. Okay, we we have we have the decision. Tariff book one and a half hour on Monday, uh, starting the normal time. Yeah, and yeah. send out the agenda that is just continued requirement discussion. Yes, so that's that that's decided. 
Uh, so, John, John, you had a comment somewhere. You go back there now. I was. It was just Stuart was talking about basically um, inserting multiple label stacks for yeah. uh, transiting segments. Yep. And um, that's not the way hierarchical LSPs work. No, it's not. But hierarchical LSPs aren't trying to include a bunch of other data uh, somewhere else in the in the in the packet, are they? They're just simply pushing a label to get them to a different place. That's that's right. So, yeah, um, I'm just I'm wondering if this, you know, first off, it looks a little bit like a design choice, but yeah. it also would be breaking the existing uh, MPLS data plane. What what to to require the re restart of the stack, or to have yeah. multiple stacks? Yeah. Well, so so, but but what's the alternative? Um, I, I'm prepared to think there is an alternative, but pulling a bit of ancillary data out of the bottom of stack amongst some other ancillary data that you might not understand um, is messy. I understand. I, this probably isn't the, the time or place to discuss it, but I think it's right. something that we need to think about. I, I would certainly agree that we need the, 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 uh, with, uh, with discussing it further and, and, and thinking about it. Uh, yes. We I, had... I, agree, I agree with John because yes, uh, so far uh, there is no uh, provisions to allow multiple bottom of the stack indicators. Um, Through this in the MP, MPLS TP days. Yeah, but we never put ancillary data in, did we? This this is the, the, the I I would be fine with with doing it the way we did it with TP, except that um, if you need to put um, ancillary data um, in the packet, which has to go at beyond at the bottom of stack, and you have to be sure that everyone knows what they're doing when they create that model. I think that it's just something we need to think about that's all yeah yeah i certainly definitely think we need to think about it i i agree with that and and so you know wait, wait a minute uh, jan and i think greg can you kind of uh, do a problem statement and post it on the wiki you mean just post this one problem yes one yeah yes this one problem yeah well in my opinion uh, so, if we follow with a hierarchical LSP, there is no problem. If you, if you, if you, if it's a hierarchical LSP, there is no problem. If, if it's a hierarchical LSP with additional ancillary data, I believe there is a problem. I probably missed something. Right. So you've got a bunch of ancillary data at the bottom of stack. All right, it's minding its own business, doing its own thing. You know that the nodes that are going to process that know what they're doing. Then you take this packet for a walk on the side somewhere by pushing a new label on the front, and that new label needs to have some ancillary data. It could get very, very strange, particularly if they wanted to put the same ancillary data with different context in it in the bottom of stack. It's it's just messy. I think it's a big problem. Uh, yeah, I, actually, I, I kind of why always uh, bottom of the stack. Uh, I, I thought that in stack data can be uh, effectively anywhere. All right. So in all right. Okay. So we also got the issue. Yeah, your the in stack. Yes. Yeah, we do need to. This gets very very tricky when you think about in stack AD. You're quite right. So I think we need to be very okay. So that. let's continue Monday. Okay. Yeah. All right. So 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 the the point where we got to with this is um, we wrote the text on the basis on the accidental basis that we were talking about post stack and ancillary data. Greg, you mentioned in stack ancillary data and pointed out that there is no problem with that. We do need to resolve these two points at, somewhere in the design process. Good. Okay, so I, yes, I, I, I now I understand where the issue is. But do you agree that 
two people putting ancillary data, uh, post stack ancillary data could get very confusing. Yes, indeed. And it's it's not just two. It, it's it's potentially it's many n, more than two. It's n. It's n. Yes, exactly. And and, and that is what I had. That's what, I, that's what we had in mind, I think, when we wrote this this text. Okay, let's continue. Okay, all right. So we're going to continue on Monday then. Yeah, I think actually for the Instack data, we'd always said that we could have multiple sets of Instack data. No, no, I, 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 I agree that Instack works. Instack yeah. works for any of these things if you do it right, but post stack is where um, it looks like a swamp. A swamp is the polite expression for it. Yes. Okay. The I polite expression is good, William. I'll, I'll stop recording now, and uh, yes. if anyone wants to change the domain, I would only expect polite expressions from you, John.